Well, hello, everybody. It's Terry Murphy here, and we are so excited today to present to you some of the greatest talents on recruitment. Uh, you know, we really appreciate your showing up today because you're going to get some inside scoop from people who really walk the talk. I'm really excited about and you know, every one of our Riz Media webinars is always fabulous, but this one I think is going to be extra special when you see all of our guests. Um, as, you know, as the consumer continues to advance uh, their demands, one of the most important things that we've got going for us is that we want to give the ultimate service, and these people know how to do that. So I'm hoping you'll stick with us. We have some great giveaways at the end, so we want to make sure you get some giveaways. And before we get started, there's a couple of housekeeping things. But while you're here, how about posting who you are, where you're from, so we know where in the country we've got people joining us. Now, I know that Betsy, one of our guests, is definitely a Dallasite. You'll know that right away. And Mark is in Utah. Is that correct, Mark? That's Just correct. Sure. And Ron, are you in Baltimore? With the Baltimore look. With the Baltimore look, whatever that is, we will visit that later. So I'm looking on the uh, chats. Do we have anybody chatting with us yet, Mr. Sriu? Let me see. You know, I can't do everything. Multitasking is not a good thing. So I can't see. So who, just tell us where you're from. I mean, that you don't even have to tell us who you are. We'll pretend you're in witness protection. Not a problem. Uh, but one of the things that we know is that throughout the call, we will be recording this. So if you're taking notes, just know if you're an overachiever, we'll have the recording. Takes a little while, but we'll get it up. Now, if you have specific questions from our experts, you can post them in the chat box. Um, and that, that's on that questions area. That's right, should be right to your right. And throughout the webinar, we'll be monitoring some of those questions and maybe just answering them as we go along. But here's our secret weapon. We have a man behind the camera that will answer all the technical issues. You don't want to ask me because I won't, I won't know. But uh, Mr. Yu will take care of all of that. So if you have a technical question, feel free. Uh, if you have a question for one of our specific panelists, which will be Betsy, Ron, or Mark, just put it in the chat box because our goal is to make you happy and to make you totally informed. Um, so take good notes and know we're recording this uh, and you'll, you'll get the link and feel real free to be interactive. If you have a question or you need a clarification from one of our people, you just need to know that's okay. So we got anybody telling us who they are, where they're from? I don't want to mess this up because you know I can. Well, we've got a couple of people joining us. I'm excited about that. Um, so let me just tell you that you want, if you're just joining us, I'm Terry Murphy, your moderator for this RIS media call, Innovative Recruiting Strategies to Attract the Modern Agent. And boy, I'll tell you what, Mark, we want modern agents, right? If you've been in the business for a while, we want modern agents. This is so good. All right, well, here's the thing. Uh, I want to do a brief introduction of our panelists. They'll come back, but since you can see them, I want to be sure that you know that uh, they're here and what they look like, and so it's not the voice behind the behind the uh, deal. So um, any, any difficulties, questions, stay until the end. We've got uh, our end slide has some goodies in it. Um, I want to uh, let you know that Betsy Cameron is here. Please say hello, Miss Betsy. Hello, everyone. Yes, she is that adorable. Yes, she is. Ron Howard, Mr. Baltimore, would you please say hello? Hello, everybody. Yeah, author and new dad, new dad, emphasis on the new dad. And Mark Shepard, who's not only a dad, but a granddad, not that he looks like that. And Mark is actually our sponsor today. So uh, I'm Terry Murphy. I'd like to let you know that our sponsor today is Mark Shepard, principal broker for the Shepherd Real Estate Group in Layton, Utah. Yay, is it still winter there? Uh, no, well, it snowed yesterday, but it's 80, 80 degrees today. So, you know, you just never know. It's Utah. All right. That's Utah. And he's here on behalf of Broker Solutions, the Residential Real Estate Council. For those of you that know uh, what used to be the CRS, Certified Residential Specialist, they have had a facelift. And our, they are a Riz Media a sponsor for today. And Mark, you and I had a great conversation about the, I'd like to say the redesign or the, the ramping up or the reigniting of the, what the Residential Real Estate Council can do. And in this specifics, it really focuses on the independent broker, which I thought was excellent because you're an independent broker. Yeah, it's, you know, we, we noticed that and that was one of the biggest things that came from our members is that as we surveyed them and asked what was important to them, we they 
they really brought out that we weren't addressing the needs of the independent broker. And how could we as a council help them in that in that role? I know as an independent broker, I, I ran a franchise, owned a franchise for years. And when I sold it off, um, I bought another franchise. And when I sold that one off, I realized that the one thing after owning two franchises that I was missing was all of the tools that came with the franchise. And I realized that in part, what was attracting agents at that point was some of those tools that that I had vis-a-vis -vis the, the the franchise itself, the the websites, the the consulting that I needed from our our, our national counts, our national uh, folks. And when I had a question, I could pick up and just call our HR department in Denver. Uh, there were things that that they offered to me that I just didn't have as a as an independent broker. And that is what RRC saw. And so it is a privilege for us to be here and to just introduce everybody, including our own members, um, for the first time to Broker Solutions. Uh, Broker Solutions came about of you know again in that idea of how do we help independent brokers and owners give them the access to the same tools and resources that major franchises and corporations have, and we want to make sure that they have that leg up and the experts at RRC work to identify and develop some key resources and services that that we all as independent brokers need but don't necessarily have access to and two of the main services that they're providing through broker solutions are hr consulting and then a customized education uh, which there is known as agent plan uh, broker solutions that hr consulting offers us as independent brokers a dedicated expert experienced in the the areas of human resources to help us with onboarding, recruitment, compliance, organizational development. They'll help you develop recruiting strategies and tactics, uh, create your independent broker agreements, handle every, you know, every everyday HR concerns, and, and create onboarding procedures that drive agent loyalty and sales performance. They this really want to make this work. They're looking for that leadership. For that sure. as a broker. They're and, looking for that leadership. Yeah, and, and then through agent plan that you can create customized education that focuses on delivering the education that you and your agents need to be successful. It's a, we're really trying to make our, our agents work and, and make well, your brokerage successful. That's really, that's really terrific. And uh, you have a, quite a background as the regional vice president. Uh, you've been the president of the Utah, Utah CRS. So you're heavily invested in RS. And by the way, just for those of you who've attended, this is brand new. I mean, it's like 24 hours old. So we are giving you the scoop here at our RIS Media, and that's a good thing. Well, Mark, you're going to stick with us because we have our superstars. They almost look like a magazine cover, don't they? Um, that would be Ron Howard and Betsy Cameron. And we're going to start off with Betsy, if that's okay with you. Um, Betsy is um, talked about what's happening after the recruiting. She is, Let me just tell you a little bit about her. Um, Betsy is uh, a Dallasite for 20 years, is that correct? Well, Dallasite my entire life but, uh, in the real estate industry for about 20 years. Yeah, she doesn't look old enough, does she? But yeah, and she's the Vice President of Business Initiatives for the Ebby Halliday Companies. Now, Ebby is a legend. We all loved her, but, uh, she's, but her legacy lives on. Betsy is the sales leader of Ebby's iconic Little White House. Uh, uh, office and Dave Perry Miller's real estate Lakewood office and you you literally work with your executives to uh, offer strategic vision and training so it was very interesting when we had our pre-interview about what you were talking about with some of the initiatives with recruitment and you know there's a modern agent which means that we've had to retrofit a number of things so tell us a little bit about what they are doing uh, at Abbey Holiday so we can share yeah, so what we do is we know that, you know, relationships are at the forefront. And so how do we um, initially touch and create those relationships? And uh, we also feel that education, support and training are very important to the modern agent. Um, we, we receive that consistently um, when we're in our recruiting interviews. So, so how do we provide what those recruits are looking for? And what we found through research with our teams here is, is you know, having a, um, what we provide is an Ebby Edge, which is a school four day foundational course offering um, that working with buyers, working with sellers, um, you know, just going through the classroom 
types work uh, that they'll need to be exposed to um, before uh, jumping in, diving in. So uh, we offer that. And then we also offer um, the learning management system, Fast Track. So that's a self-paced on-demand learning. So that's super important to have that um, mix. Um, well, but certainly after this year that, um, so LMSs have come a long way. I mean, because they were like eating dirt for a while. And, uh, but that on-demand thing is, we've all been trained to do that because of our lovely uh, imposed sequestering for the last year. So uh, how effective has that been with your interaction with your agents? Have they, have they stepped up to the plate? Are they, do they get coaching besides that? Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, they do. So, so in addition to the LMS and the Abbey Edge, we also have recently launched a, uh, what we call the Success Coach Program. And so it is an eight week long program and we're tweaking along the way. But um, an eight week long program, which we consider our lab portion. Um, so we have classroom at Abbey Edge and then we have uh, the success coach program, which is our lab. It's really diving deep and, um, you know, writing an offer, practicing writing an offer and, you know, really engaging and also um, have the piece of the accountability um, in place, too. So um, that's also well, I, I, there's a big difference between a learning lab and training because training has a little more interaction to it. And my understanding is that you don't, you really believe in creating from, from our pre-interview because we've really had, we've had some fun without y'all, by the way. Um, but understanding that the relationship is more important than the structure of selling, listing and selling real estate. And you've done that with a number of uh, initiatives, including mentoring, but your mentoring's a lot it's not just mentoring. I mean, you really get into the weeds. So tell us a little bit about your mentoring program. So the mentoring program is really geared more towards field work. So when our recruits have the opportunity to be paired with a mentor, that's more of a shadowing opportunity for the recruit, and which is super important. Uh, and feedback we get is that that's for, um, you know, the agent who feels so, you know, what do I do? this is the perfect opportunity to get out into the field with an experienced agent to know how to hold an open house and how to talk through that listing presentation or work with buyers. So, oh, You also talk about shadowing with a seasoned agent. Now, uh, years ago, that was not real common. And, uh, but when you're actually in, in, in the streets, you know, actually living and, and shadowing someone, um, that, that's a whole different experience than you know, what we would call a content dump. Uh, but you also talk about surveys. How does that work? Well, we were, um, when we were, when we're going through all of our programs, we survey the agents to see, is it meeting their needs? Are we, you know, do we need to make some adjustments? Do we need to make some tweaking um, so that we can serve the agent better so we can better help prepare them. So we do survey the agents that go through these programs so that we can get feedback and then adjust where needed. And just one special emphasis when we had our, our pre-interview, you talked about helping brokers understand the standard of consistency because agents are, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, they work in their business, not on the business. And they're very reactionary. And, and Ron is going to talk about the systems that we, that we are both familiar with. And you talked about them as well. When we talk about how do we keep them accountable, what's the tracking and metrics as an example? Give us an example of, of one of the metrics that you just had where you got, what, over a thousand calls that were made in a week. That was in our uh, coaching program. And that was fabulous to see that. So when, we, when they're going through the coaching program, they're filling out a, a Google form that shows how many calls they've made, how, how many of those calls turned into listing presentations, how many listing presentations turned into actual listings, and so on and so on. So um, looking at those metrics and seeing that a thousand calls were made in one week from the 32 participants in the program, that's huge. That's a lot of opportunity there. So, um, and it's exciting to report on those numbers to the class because they get excited and they get motivated um, seeing others succeed in their phone calls. Well, I remember that Clay Gaddis, who's our master coach at Workman, said that the, when you talked about supporting agents, obviously we have tools and we have systems. We have the eight-week coaching program. We have the four-day Ebby School, Ebby Edge. Isn't it? 
Um, she probably didn't know that when they named her. But um, so tell us what what does support mean to you? Because you talked about the feeling of aloneness when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, so I think so you know, tell us how to support. In the support realm, you know, we really try to focus on, okay, what does the agent need? We have individual conversations with our with our recruits. What are they looking for? What do they need in a support capacity? So is that a mentor? Is that going through the coaching program? Is that um, is that in the field, in the staff? What can the staff do to help um, make sure that that agent feels comfortable and ready to go? So, and, and when we talked about tracking activities, now we all know, and I know Mark, you know this as well, is that we can tell them, you know, they can say, oh, I want to get two listings a month or four, four sales a month. But then there's that trackability, that, that monitoring of the metrics. And so tell us a little bit about, so you actually go into the, the metrics of conversion from listing presentation skill training or buyer presentation. Um, so how, how does that get reported? I mean, do you meet with them on a regular basis? Is it a manager's job? How, how does that work? So our coach does meet with them at the end of the week. They turn in their um, their weekly report. And so our coach uh, will meet with them and just kind of mo monitor it. That is all, That information is also provided to their sales manager. So they have the ability to double check that as well. So it's it's a joint effort. It's, you know, we want to make sure our sales leaders are super involved in it as well. So pairing those two together and having two, you know, people tracking them and watching, you know, their success um, is super helpful for them. And your learning management system, which we called LMS, I, I'm not sure everybody knows what that means, you know, how we talk in acronyms, uh, yeah. which gets worse if you speak for the Navy, by the way, because they don't even speak English. It's all acronyms. But LMS stands for learning management system. And that's pretty much, um, I think what we talked about it being was that it was self-paced. In other words, it was uh, by choice. Right. Is that, so is that's there correct. like, is there, is there a, a, a timer on that or how does that work? We like, to, we like for our agents to complete that within the first 90 days of onboarding. Uh, it's 12 modules and they are made up of all kinds of um, pre-recorded, you know, webinars and um, sessions where they can tap in and we like for them to complete it within the first 90 days, but they can go back and access that and brush up on skills if they feel like, oh, I, I forgot something. Let me go back to fast track is what we call it right. uh, and, and brush up. All right, so there you go. I mean, you have to, uh, obviously we're gonna have some questions because once uh, Ron uh, tells us a little bit about what's going on there. Um, Mark, has, has any of that resonated with you? I mean, uh, do you have a, se a segment for uh, a huddle, a meeting? How do, you, uh, how do you enforce accountability without it being um, confrontational? Let's put it that way. And that is tough. And I like what Betsy said. I mean, it is, it's follow up with those agents and really getting to know them. And it's got to be personal. If it feels like it's a, a coming down on the agent, you're not performing, you're not doing your deal. What, what's wrong with you? It's, it, you've messed up. It's got to be a, how do I help you? How do we, how do we make this improve? Well, and part of the metrics thing, Betsy, I think that, I mean, I just know this from being a master coach myself is, you know, you, if, if you're tracking what you're doing and Ron, you, you're going to get into this in a minute. When you're tracking what you're doing, you can see the results, whether it's 90 days away or 60 days away or at the end of the week. And like you said, you made a thousand calls. Be interesting to see how you know what the conversion rate was. And if it wasn't there, Mark, then we know we need script training or we need, um, you know, a, you know, follow up a loop rotation is what what uh, Cleve likes to call it. So um, it's you're also looking for a higher level of agent, Betsy. I think you, you mentioned that, that you're looking for MBA grads. Is that, I mean, as opposed to so, somebody who just decides they like houses and people, which only lasts, what, about three weeks? Right. As we all know, it's so much more than that. So um, we really, in our vetting process, when we're talking to these recruits, we're, we're really asking, you know, deeper questions of, you know, tell me a little bit more. How can we, how can we get a little bit more out of it um, to see if this is the right fit for you? Um, so, you know, really honing in on trying to find people because we want them to be successful and, um, and it's, you know, we want to make sure we're the fit. 
Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's going to come up for Ron uh, in a second, because I know Ron and, you know, he's he authored a book recently, which we all read. But, you know, there's that fit. And I think as brokers, uh, Mark, you know, I've been around for a while. Um, anybody that used to fog a mirror could be a realtor. And I don't mean that to be disparaging, but I mean, it was not, you know, the entry level was you needed a PhD. So you have, you have a lot of people who want to buy it to try it. So what I'm hearing from Betsy and Abby Halliday is that the criteria has to match. So there has to be a core value match there. Would that be accurate, Betsy? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Mark, and I'm sure Mark, we'll, we'll ask Mark in a second, but Betsy, do you, do you have a goal that they, they, I don't want to say have to make, but I mean, are you expecting a certain number of transactions by the end of the year or by the end of the quarter? How does that work? We would like to see, and one of the reasons why we implemented the coaching program is because we would really like to see for our new agents in their first year producing somewhere between four and six transactions. Um, and so that's that's what we would like to see. That's what our goal is here. So um, we'll we'll keep you posted. Yeah, I think that's great because, uh, you know, you talked about the mentoring being more of a, a field of opportunity uh, for those agents. And imagine, Mark, I mean, having that kind of jumpstart when we started the business. Um, you know, here's here's a phone book and here's a desk and a phone and you're kind of done. So um, so do you have a, a metric for performance to stay on your team, Mark? Well, we want six to 12 in that first year. I mean, we, we're in Utah, things are a little bit different, you know, and our market's a little bit different. We're pushing for six to 12 in that first year and getting them on board. You know, Betsy mentioned the, you know, the, the are they the right fit? And one of those things that is on, on Broker Solutions website is a, it's it's a questionnaire that really guides them into where they should be in this business. Are they should they be an agent? Should they be an assistant? Should they be doing something else? And it it'll I guide them to the right spot. Yeah, and that's an, an important element because everybody seems to think you know they have an idea, and then as a team leader, we know that there's another whole element to what what has to go on to make that happen. So Betsy, stick with us because I want to introduce Ron. Um, Ron is a team leader and a senior coach with Workman Success Systems. He's a best-selling author of three books, right? You, you didn't write one last night, did you? Yeah. Only, well, well, you're on your third. I know that. He's a little bit of an overachiever, to be quite frank. Um, he's the author of Create Demand and Stop Chasing Business. And your, your most recent one, can I just grab it over here? Because I have a copy, and I just want everybody to see that you really did, in the meantime, besides... Uh, have a baby you actually wrote a book and uh but you know the book isn't just the wisdom of you ron you really were talked about um how how you incorporated the collective intellect of other coaches you know you've been in the hall of fame for what uh 95 years or something oh, it's been nine uh and really you're one of those high ranking teams and you have an interesting story behind the teams because everything looked really good from the outside until you really got in and did some metrics so I want you to share with us that you were ranked as the Mid-Atlantic Most Favorably Reviewed, ranking high in the Wall Street Journal's top teams and nearly 900 five-star reviews. Now, you all know that things in real estate don't always go perfectly, ever. And so no. to, get that, to get 900 is pretty amazing. Thanks for joining us, Ron Howard. Uh, you're, you're welcome. So, you know, a couple generations before me, when you were a rock star agent, you opened a brokerage and then uh you know a generation after that uh top producing agents were like wait a minute i can start a team and you know as the margins can squeeze out of the brokerage the team leaders are like all right i'm gonna uh i'm gonna get coached i'm gonna figure out how to add all these services and bring that margin back into the team so you know when i coach a, a broker i think of recruiting the modern agent at the bottom of like a 15 point checklist that you got to check off all these boxes first you gotta you gotta build something that somebody wants to come to. Well, you, you, you need to build a modern brokerage, but uh, you got to steal from the playbook of the team leaders, right? Like you got to, you got, for, for me, when I, um, if I'm working with a broker, it's can, can you coach somebody to do 30 to 50 transactions a year, whether they're, they're new or been in the business for a while? You should be able to, and if you don't, you should hire a coach to get yourself coached up so that you can become a coach within your organization. Um, the modern agent does a lot of social media. You right now today, write this down, could go to Facebook Blueprint. They have 80 courses that professionals in the advertising industry take these free courses to get certified as a Facebook. There's a couple certifications. 
it could take you two weeks you can go through these 80 free courses and become an expert at, at, at targeting laser targeting advertising like you've never been able to do in the history of advertising uh and it's free and you can you can add that skill uh like in in like two weeks i went through all those courses so i can you know, i can sit down with the agent that's talking about an instagram and i say oh you really well let me show you how the back end works and how to really target your ads um you know if you don't have a training program you got to develop a training program we offer a training program to the public and that's the part where you know we're touching we're, we come from uh and terry you come from this from a serve regardless of opportunity but you have to create a training coaching program not only for your brokerage but for the public show off like you know go deep get uncomfortable you need new experiences you've got into this broker mentality and you gotta you gotta steal from the team leader playbook and 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 um, you gotta get radically open-minded and you gotta have a change mindset and you gotta you gotta get uncomfortable for a couple of years and and get coached and 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 realize all of the benefits that we all realize when we get coached to become a coach I can sit down with any agent and do a gap analysis or even a broker on their business and talk to them deeply about how we can fill those gaps. And it doesn't happen overnight, but I've gone deep on that kind of stuff. So I, you know, I, I feel comfortable in any room with any level of agent. And oh, we can do yeah. a SWOT, a SWOT analysis. You yeah, you do the SWOT analysis, you do the culture match, but you know, I don't want to miss a point here because it's too good for these people to hear. But you talked about, um, that as a as a team leader, and, and this this uh, parallels what Betsy was talking about, and that is that you hire the right people uh, to be on your team. Now you had a ginormous team, and you were working all the time. And then what happened? Well, so if, if we if we're going back to, to my team, you know, I I, I did opportunity hires at a thirty person team, uh, over five hundred fifty transactions. But uh, as the volume grew, the margin shrank, and then I. Um, you know, searched around for a coaching company, found Workman. We deconstructed my business, built it with solid uh, systems and processes. And, you know, I have a, you know, my employees and, and my agents have all been through a multi-step interview process. We do uh, disc behavioral assessments. Uh, we ask, uh, um, you know, integrity questions. We ask uh, past behavior questions. Um, and and it, it's it's more of a corporate type of program so that we get people that are, you know, in it or along the core values. A broker can do this too. That's the whole thing. You're trying to, um, you know, bring in the modern agent. A modern agent eventually will want to start a team. So as a broker, you should provide a la carte services, uh, a la carte marketing, a la carte lead generation, a la carte listing management, a la carte transaction coordination, and, and say, look, I'm going to show you how to get to 30 to 50 transactions. And if you do get up to that 30 transactions, guess what? Let me show you how to, to how to build a team. Let me show you how to make your first hire, your first customer care coordinator that's going to take 30% of, you know, you're spending 30 or 40% of your time on um, admin stuff. Let me show you how you can pay somebody and you'll do 12 more deals and pay for it. And then how to bring on your first buyer agent. Like how in this day, if you're a broker, even if you've never had a team, how do, how do you expect to help, help people become better agents and build teams if you don't know how to do it yourself? Well, and that brings up a point in the hiring process. And of course, I'm DISC certified, so I'm, I'm a bit of a fan. But um, when, uh, when we wrote the book, Selling with Style, we, we talked about how certain styles work. At, and Mark, I think you, you alluded to this, that they get into the business and maybe they're not right for the front end, you know, the sales end, but maybe they're terrific at inside sales. And so uh, Ron had a lot of people but, but it wasn't profitable. And you talk about, you said margins are compressing and the way to solve this is to recruit modern agents. And so if they're willing, Betsy, like you said, to commit to learning from ML, uh, LMS, and if they're committed to being accountable, uh, Mark, and they're meeting the metrics, then, then you know you've got the right people in the bus because the only way a team works is when everybody supports the team, not just the team leader. Would that be accurate, Ron? Yeah, and, and so you know, it, 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 the, that 15-point checklist I was talking about. Um, if you do the first 14 of them properly, you don't recruit; you attract. You're doing events. I do a business planning event that I open up to our whole to anybody that wants to join it, and I and I sell them out. We we do a virtual business planning event through our. You know, we have a 30-page uh, business planning workbook. Um, this year we did it on Zoom. We did three of them. They they fill up. That we get too many people in them. Um, I'm helping 
because their broker or their team leader doesn't know how to do a business plan. And, and you know, I, and we do that. We do it for ourselves. We do it for our team. We do it for our agents. Um, if you can't do that as a broker in this day and age, you are already disrupted. <laughs> you don't have to wait for disruption. If you can't uh, get an agent to understand like the core principles of time blocking, daily success habits, and, and uh, managing an MVP program with their top 50 of their sphere of influence and focusing on their daily success habits. Like if you don't understand that, like how do you expect to get people in to, to perform at that level? You, you're gonna get them in and, and, cause it's all smoke and mirrors, right? Come join us, we're great, we do all of these things, but you don't really do anything. And then they get there and then, you know, you got people coming in the front door and out the back door because it's just all smoke and mirrors, right? And well, now, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, and besides, I think of all the money, Betsy and, and Mark, that we put into any kind of training. I mean, the real estate is, industry is highly overtrained, but the, you know, the, the, the integration of that information maybe is not so much. And, and one of the things that you really learned, though, when, when you had the big team, Ron, was that you, you could see that the margins weren't working. And I mean, you had, what, 50 people? I, I, I had 30 people. But you know, so the the experience on the on the team and and um, you know obviously there's a parallel interest in the modern agent at the team level and I do it I've I've been in ownership of, of brokerage and and now all I am is a team leader, but the, the principles can work on either side right like as as a broker if I was just a broker now I'd be I, I would I would get a coach I would be coached to be a coach I would be able to sit down a new agent and say look I'm going to get you from start I'm going to get you from A to B. Like in the shortest amount of time, I'm going to show you, you know, you're not going to make any wrong turns. I'm going to keep you on track. I'm going to, and if I'm going to help you build a team, I'm certainly going to help you do it profitably. So you don't make all the, all the volume mistakes. You're getting all these awards, how great you are, but at the same time you're losing money or breaking even. Like I was on that track where, you know, you're, you're, you're making $4 million in commissions, but you're netting the same amount you're, you're making, you know, when you're netting 2 million in commissions, or <laughs> it's just, you know, the volume goes up and the, the margin comes down. But you know, for for whether it's a team or a broker, you just have to get uncomfortable. You have to get off your ass. You gotta, um, you, you you can't expect to recruit a modern agent or a tr like I I don't recruit. I attract. I do things and I and I serve regardless of opportunity. I give it out there. It comes ten times back, and that allows us to filter and behavioral assessment. People are like, you're giving me a behavioral assessment. I just talked to three other brokerages in town. They all want me. I'm like. <laughs> I, I, yeah, 100%. You're going to go through our process. Like you haven't done nothing in, in real estate. Like, why would I want you? <laughs> like you, well, I, you know, the other thing though, too, it, it, from, from our experiences being master coaches is that so often, and Mark, I think you understand this. I mean, you, I just had somebody send me this beautiful magazine that obviously they just put their picture on the cover and there's recipes and everything. I was like, what? I mean, how much did that cost? It, the printing, the personalizing and there we can't track the return on the investment and if you can't do that then you can't do the profit and loss because you don't know what the return on the investment was and so what ron is saying is you pay attention and there has to be a, a even on lead generation i mean for every x amount of leads there should be conversion so mark uh, do you have your people do a profit and loss of any kind or do you have them do a projection for investments that they're going to make like sending seeds yeah, so we people in a high rise don't always work. I'm just saying. Yeah, we have them do a profit and loss. I mean, it's it, it my my mentality with them and teaching them is if you can't track it, it's not worth doing. If you can't see the results and know where your results are coming from, why are you doing it? Exactly, exactly. And so Betsy, in the in the uh, I, I know that you have so many levels of of training over there at Ebby. Uh, is that part of business planning part of the pro process? Yes, it's absolutely. That's our sales managers. Each of our sales managers sits down with our uh, agents and uh, implements a business plan. We have a we have a templated business plan um, that we uh, have available to anybody. But if they use their own, as long as we have something in place and the sales manager can walk through that and make sure there are goals set in place. Um, but yes, that is definitely a big part of our program. So I know that. Um... Ron is now very metric driven because it makes sense. It just makes sense if you're going to be in the business to be in the business. And so you talk about, um, Ron, you talk about that uh, agents agents join a team for a reason and they think they're going to be fed leads. But in when they really understand the core culture of it, 
it is to um, to build the team and to get where they want to go in life. So one of the one of the pivotal pieces that we have, uh, you talked about um, to be successful is the daily success habits, the lead tracker, the top 50, all of that, and really having to commit to doing that. So we subscribe to huddles as a team leader so that you know what the team is doing and you can support them along the way. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, we, we do a huddle Monday through Friday. They're all very specific. They're 15 minutes. They, they cover either tech, CRM, lead generation, uh, contract stuff on Thursdays. We go over numbers. Uh, we celebrate our wins on Mondays. Friday, we do role play. Um, you, you know, my value, I can, I can tell you my value proposition. If a broker or a team leader can't explain their value proposition, they're not good. If they can't teach you at least four columns of what to focus on to build your business and, and do a business plan that goes five year, two years, one year, uh, back into the quarter, to the month, to the week, to the day, to time block, what you got to do daily to hit that five year goal, then then they're, they're just kind of going with the flow, right? And, and their business is probably the same way. Like you, as a broker, a team leader, if you're going to... Um, be part of the, like you can become part of the disruption or you can get disrupted or you already are disrupted and you're just hanging on by a thread and, and you just don't, and you're going out of business and, and you don't even realize it, right? So you, you get to choose, but uh, back to the huddle, yeah, they're super important. We do them, gets people started in the morning. It gets them focused. We, we, we share great ideas, uh, very specific. And um, it, it, what it does, it saves a lot of time for the broker and team leader because you cover stuff early at 9 a.m., you know, you cover any issues or anything, and then throughout the day, you don't have to get constantly bothered by agents asking things because they know they take care of it during the huddle. Uh, and don't you find also that having the huddles now? That, and you know, one of our other coaches does a terrific job on the difference between a meeting and a huddle because we don't want it to be a session, you know. But that huddle piece, uh, Ron, isn't that designed for the commitment they made on their strat plan for my planned week? Uh, to yeah, one of certain activities now you've got yours all parsed out you know brooke signs does that well too where on wednesdays the team leader sits down with the team and they call their leads um, or they touch it with their leads i mean can you tell me uh how how does that work for you i mean is there somebody else because you're busy running the team that makes sure that you know that that all of the commitments that they said they were going to do they met because they wanted to grow their business in that way you kind of blew over the four pillars but the four pillars are different streams of income that you're focused on during yeah. the week. Yeah, so I have 10 commitments. We, we, I do have a uh, customer care coordinator that, that um, we, we track everything, right? So we track daily success habits. We, we track uh, lead conversion. We track every morning if you're in the CRM and staying up, up to date with your, your leads. Um, part of the commitments, the 10 commitments, I call it 10 commitments, 10 commitments to be a real estate rock star, but also to be on our team just happens to be the minimum requirements, right? And and we got to narrow it down. Like uh, agents are so entrepreneurial that they don't like to be what you know told what to do. So it, it, even as simple, like my brother is a surgeon. Some of his surgeries take 187 steps. I'm like, all you got to do is these 10 things. And if we can make them work, you know, all I got to do is time block three hours a day in each day and we can do the activities. They're going to get you that six month goal and that year goal. Um, so it's... Um, of course, everybody wants to be, be a real estate rock star. It just happens to be also our our minimum commitment to be on the team, and we review it often. And we ask people to leave if they can't. We, you know, you, you know. Oh, we don't, we don't say you got to leave. We just kind of say you're released. It's <laughs> a little softer. Now, Mark, you were shaking your head. Did you have a thought there about uh, about that accountability piece? No, it's just crucial. Uh, I mean, Ron's spot on. They, it, it's not hard. It's you know, as as he said, it's ten steps. All you got to do is time block it out and do those ten things and it's and, not right and what happens yeah and what happens is we get stuck in the whirlwind which is why we like to have that daily commitment betsy you're shaking your head want to add a little comment there yes absolutely i see it all the time agents get stuck in that whirlwind and just they're they're putting out fires putting out fires instead of being in front of everything and so that really does affect um their ability to have a successful business uh, well, I want to get back to something that Ron said earlier, and he said the development should not be optional. You need to commit to the program. I will we'll onboard you correctly, make sure you get to 36 transactions a year. <clears throat> Is there a time in, in when you see that, Ron, they, they you know, they uh, made a commitment they can't make? In other words, they, they thought they could do it because you do it so easily, right? Do you ever see that? They're, you know, you go out, you get a listing because 
oh, by the way, you're a champion lister kind of thing. Well, uh, do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, what's, at what point in a team for recruitment do you decide that they're either going to grid it out or they're just going to have to uh, be released? So, I mean, we, we feel like we do a uh, better job than 95% of, uh, you know, the people that are bringing people on board, whether it's employees or, or agents. And then you do get people on board that, that um, are having a hard time and it's a couple sit downs and then, you know, it's usually like the third sit down. I also have the office manager with us and just say, hey, uh, George is here. He's going to explain what it's like to be at the brokerage because we can't uh, have you on the team anymore. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's but we're not like we've made a big investment. Right. So there's a lot of there's, you know, a handful of um, conversations before that. But once it becomes clear on like the third or fourth, um, you know, the, the third or fourth attempt and especially if you know, because they're not managing their MVP program and their top 50 of their SOI and all the things that, that we teach, um, and they're not following up in the CRM, they're not doing the things they're gonna make money, then it's a, it's a, just a, a bad investment in time and we, we'll move on. Uh, we have no no problem uh, doing that. But I mean, we're, we're empathetic to uh, unique situations, but we won't let it go on too long. Uh, so if I was culture. watching this and I was, in, I was a broker and I wanted to increase my team, um, I, I know Betsy said that they look, they, there's a process or a tactical process to finding agents. Now, Ron, you know, you have enough of a reputation where people want to be on a team that wins. Okay, everybody wants to be on a winning team, but some people don't want to go to practice. You know what I'm saying? So you've already got metrics in place for that, for that upfront, because if you have to go through a, you know, behavioral at, and, and go through all the culture and the meetings and whatever. It, and the, but the you got to be careful of the opportunity hires. Like you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a team or a business where you're doing a lot of business and it attracts people, you got to make sure you vet them properly or they're just going to be an opportunity hire and that could mess up your culture. Yeah, and the culture is a real important piece. And for those of you, uh, you, you think you have a culture until it's really verbalized and it's evident in everything that you do, how you hire, how you release, how you treat your clients and your customers, how they treat each other on the team. Uh, Dave Ramsey is a great example of that when we work with Dave. You know, everybody on that team supports everybody on the team. So I, I guess I have to ask, Betsy, you, you talk about wanting to uh, attract MBA kind of level people, people that are clearly committed to learning and or uh, advancing their skill set. Because once you put them through that course, and I'm assuming that, do they pay for that course? We have, have a fee, not, we have a fee not just for the course, but we have a fee for onboarding a new agent, kind of, um, which which encompasses the fast track, the LMS, the um, Abbey Edge, and also the coaching program. So there is a fee, and we also require them to sign a commitment letter, um, stating that they will, you know, complete these items um, in order to, you know, proceed. So. And doesn't that make sense in any relationship? I mean, any relationship that you have when there's an agreement, and it doesn't have to be legally, you know, this big legal right. thing. It be, here's your expectations, okay? Yep. So, Ron, I know that uh, Workman Success has a whole series for every single position has an agreement. You make sure they're all endorsed. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we have our all our jobs are described. And then we actually create a workflow, uh, both the buying and the selling side that has every single part of the workflow assigned to somebody in the operational team, including the agent. So everybody knows what everybody is doing. And it's, and we have our, you know, we, we did the whole work, we did it kind of in a unique way. We, we took the workman descriptions and then we did the workflow and then we, every piece of anybody's workflow we put into their job description, it's a couple pages. And so people know when we're hiring like a, a, a transaction coordinator or a listing manager or a customer care coordinator, their job description is at a very granular level, and there, it's there's no nothing's ambiguous of what it is we expect you to do because we described it at like a super granular level. Got it. And Mark, do you have do you have some kind of the same setup where you are? Yeah, yeah, very similar. Um, I mean, we've got our our onboarding process. We we we, we kind of run a you know very similar to what Betsy's doing. Um, it, it's it's teaching them that this is business. You Excellent. wouldn't start anything else, and it's the biggest mistake people make coming in here is that I just I real estate. I just practice real estate. No, yeah. I'm sorry. You it's just started the business. Yeah, so I just want you to mention here, does um, when you talked about the uh, the RC having the um, having the HR piece, is that something that an independent broker who doesn't have, 
you know, a coaching background or uh, Abby Holiday as a backup? Is that something they can get there? Yep, that is exactly what it is. And they, they will help you put all that together as you start your brokerage or if you started as you're getting it going and want to improve. Got it. So, you know, here's here's a uh, on the slide, we've got teams are the future and they are because the consumer is so demanding. And I, I love to use the analogy of a stage. You know, if we put Betsy and Ron on stage, they can't be running the popcorn machine. They can't be taking tickets. They can't be passing out programs because even even though you're capable and you think you can multitask, at the end of the day, you're still a person and life gets in the way. So talk about how can you team for the future? What, what, would, be, what, what would you say to that? What, what, what do you see as teaming going forward? I mean, are you, do you see it as a threat as an independent broker, Mark? Ron, what do you feel on that? You wanna go, Mark? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see it as a threat. I mean, it's... It, it, well, a lot of your independent brokerages, that's all they really are, is a team. Uh, they're, they're a team with a, a brand name on it or their own brand name on it, but they're, they're nothing more than a team. So no, I, I don't see it as a threat. I see it as the future. Yeah, I, I do too. And Ron, what, what, uh, what can you add to that? Yeah, you know, last week I got asked, uh, you know, what, what do you think, um, how, how the consumer handles dealing with a team? And uh, I was like, wow, I think the consumer expects a team. They go to the dentist, they, they deal with the team. They go to their doctor, they deal with the team. They go anywhere, they go to Jiffy Lube, they're dealing with the team. Everybody's got a specialized job. And the problem is that a lot of people read a team building book and then all of a sudden, voila, we're a team and I'm gonna run it by poolside and I'm gonna have this person do this and everything's not specced out, right? So it's a big mess. So like you, you see a lot of, um, just you know, just horrible teams that don't flow. But but after you've been doing this a while and you're a coach and you have systems and process and everybody knows what to do, it's delightful. Like go on to look at my reviews. I mean, people love our service because I focus on what I do. I have my customer care coordinator focus on what she does, and you know the transaction coordinator manages transactions. Our buyer agents, you know, work out there and fight for deals right now, which they need every minute they can spare to do that because it's so competitive. And our our listing manager manages and. The handoffs are beautiful. Everybody gets introduced from the beginning, and um, it's such a delightful experience. Bingo. So uh, we have a lot of uh, independent agents, and I'm sure you've heard this, Betsy, that say, oh, my people want me. And um, if you recall, Ron, uh, Christy Buck, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in real estate I've ever seen, mighty mighty small but mighty powerful, um, yeah. <laughs> Rol said, uh, no, they'll step over your dead body because they want a house, okay? So like you said, I think you just kind of did it fast. I just want to punctuate that. When you do it right from the get-go, when you you know tell them that there's a specialist that shows $200,000 houses or $400,000 houses and that this one handles the transaction, then they don't feel like they're being pawned off because I think that's one of the issues uh, that we have with the consumers that they, if they, because it, it's a relationship thing generally, unless it's a, you know, a, a hey, Terry. So. You know, uh, for 15 years, I had Ron Howard and Associates, and this goes to what you're saying right there. Uh, last week, we announced we completely rebranded my team. It's the Greatest Moves team. I want, you know, I wanted to call our team. You know, what was better than great, greatest? What implies that we're going to stay with these people across time? Is moves? Our logos kind of looks like Starbucks logos. It's, it's really cool, but my name is no longer in the team name, and it's really because as we expand into some of these new markets, I want the focus to be on the agent. And it, we, when, and it goes to your point, like. Buyers want homes. They 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 search on you know realtor.com, home snap, Zillow, wherever they're looking at houses, and then they they become a lead to an agent, right? Um, and then the way that we manage our, our uh, MVP programs, how we stay in touch with our past clients and do a really good job at that, that's with between me and my top 50, and it's between my, you know another agent's top 50. Our team name is really kind of like a, what I call a platform. We're, we're powered by a platform. And and it's really like, so now I think the evolution of teams is really, um, if you want to get really good talent and, and um, even better talent is kind of put your money where your mouth is. I, like I took my name out of my team because it's going to focus on the agents and, and uh, sort of become downgraded to, you know, we're powered by the greatest moves team, but the focus and, and, and what makes our team great is the agents. So we've completely shifted the focus. So that requires, I would say in general, that that huddle which keeps the productivity consistent to, to uh, parallel what Betsy was talking about. Consistency of business gives the consumer a better experience. The better experience the consumer gets, the more specific they are about wanting 
uh, that quality level of service. And so uh, the, the huddles ensure that everybody who's committed to do X, would you say that, Ron, gets it done, right? Yeah, I mean, huddles are one part of the accountability part. The biggest part, uh, I think, where people mess up with accountability is they don't take it themselves. Like, you know, they, a team leader or a broker expects to hold their, their team members accountable to something, but they can't hold themselves accountable. So you got to really look in the mirror and, and you, you, you'll have this, you'll be at a crossroad of, um, y you know, if you're like in life a, a, a seven, you're a mess up of a person, you, that's you're going to attract the same thing. You got to get your act together. <laughs> you know, you got to really dig deep and and build something that that attracts people, and then you don't have to do the recruiting. There you go. And so I think Betsy, you had about the same thing. So um, as we uh, roll into the last few minutes of this, um, I'd like each of you to kind of share with our our attendees one one golden nugget takeaway. And um, I'd like maybe Betsy, would you like to start with that? Oh gosh, um, really focusing on, I think when recruiting, customizing to that particular recruit and really building on that relationship um, is so important. And, um, and then to be able to, I know you said one nugget, but, and then to be able to provide that um, accountability and that coaching to be able to get them on track is, um, is very powerful and important. So what you're saying is, you know, making sure that you you got them all educated up and that you're watching them so that if there is a support issue through coaching or support, you can ha you can handle that. Uh, and that makes the whole team work better, which makes the company work better, which makes the consumer want us more. Uh, if I'm paraphrasing for you, yes. uh, Mark, what would you say? Make sure you've got the systems in place. Um, they're crucial. Make sure you're following your own systems and that your agents are following those systems as well. Train them in those systems. Uh, you know, broker solutions will be able to help you do that. That's good. If you're an independent broker, you need it. You need the guidance. Um, but I would do that. And then I, I want to piggyback on what Ron said. On, I had an agent or had a, a customer call me and was surprised that I answered the phone. And I took that as a compliment. And it wasn't. She wondered why I was answering the phone. And oh, I had to explain to her that she called my cell phone, that that is that is who you called was my cell phone. But she actually was not impressed that I answered my phone. It, she expected my well, secretary we, to answer it. We can fix oh, that. Oh, I, I mean, Ron has people answering his phone, so <laughs> just messing with you. Um, tell us, how many people do you have working for you now, Ron? Uh, 15 right now. And, uh, so you went from 30 to 15? Uh, 30 to 10. And then we're slow growing. And uh, actually, we just added one today. So I guess we're at 16, but we haven't done his paperwork yet. Um, but you know, if I if I was going to say anything to anybody to to for my my wrap up is if you're not living the life that you want, if you're having pain because you're not leasing the kind of car you want, or your family's not in the right house, or you can't put your kids in school, take that real pain and transmute it into motivation, and then. The perceived pain that's holding you back, like the things that you're worried about, like uh, like all the things that you're worried and think are going to be painful, push through that. Like like so I call it pain fuel. Like take the real pain and let that fuel you and motivate you past the things that you think are painful, and then you'll realize it wasn't painful. It's just different. Yeah, and by the way, just uh, just I think that was such a nice analogy. It reminded me that the whole book is pit stops. Uh, profitability, performance, and pit stops. And we use, you think about pit stops in a racing situation, that's where they adjust going forward so you can win the race. And so you're right. We didn't address the, the pain, by the way, Betsy, that comes with when you're brand new and like you're out there by yourself and alone, which is what Steve was talking about, and why the support of management needs to be in the trenches. And so just like some of our, our coaches, Ron, they sit down and they do the top 50 together. And they do, so part of the culture match has to be that you do attend the client events, that you do show up, that you do um, you know, align yourself with the, the way we serve with regardless of opportunity, which is the way I would end that. But um, yeah, so I, I think that uh, in general, when we talk about recruitment, people want to be with a winner. But at the end of the day, recruitment is leadership. And I think, Ron, we kind of blew past that, but you talked, uh, you, you talked about that, that 
that it creates leaders because everybody's a leader in their own cycle. Did I, I wanted, say that correctly for you? You know, I, I think with leadership is you got to wake up every day thinking that you're a poor leader and you want to work on and, and uh, learn and read and um, really focus on the development of your agents and how to get them to success. And, and with that, you'll find your success. And um, you got to figure out your motivation. You, you know, is it rewards or service? It, you know, it should be service driven. It's okay to be a little rewards driven. Everybody likes the Facebook likes and all that kind of stuff. But you got to really come from a, a place of uh, serving off of opportunity. It's got to be really service oriented. Um, it might not be, you might not be the right person for the brokerage you own, you know, but if you, if you can't adapt to really focus on the people that you're trying to, to, to um, you know, help them uh, get out of their pain, get out of their, you know, problems in, in life. And I, I tell you, it's amazing when you take somebody that, you, you know, was making, you know, whatever, 20,000 a year and living in a basement apartment. And then a couple of years later, they have a big, you know, a nice family and a waterfront, nice property because they believed in you, right? You got them this, to say, hey, look, I will show you, I've already been through this whole thing. I can show you how to get there. You got to trust me, make a million dollars my way, then we'll do it your way. Let's, let's you know, focus on this. And um, it's amazing. It, it, it's uh, not, not, not all of them go that way, but that's, that's what really uh, gets me up in the morning. So if you're a team leader out there or want to be a team leader, obviously there's plenty of opportunities here. We do have some giveaways. Um, we have uh, Work With Successes has a modern agent page. Uh, we get How are we going to get a chapter of your book, Ron? Yeah, is that so on that page? It is, yep. Yep. So the, the, the actual the chapter I, I provided was uh, eight evolutions of a team. So if you're thinking about building a team or, uh, you know, wondering, and, and that was through interviewing 25 top producing profitable teams of how to come up with these eight evolutions of what a team looks like. Okay. And then we have a daily success habits, which we're happy to share from Workman Success. And Betsy was kind enough to share her one page flyer on the coaching program uh, from Abby Halliday. So all of those things are tools. And so we all know this. Everybody's, um, everybody's bought a piece of equipment to exercise, especially after COVID. Uh, most of those um, treadmills are, are sporting drying lingerie because if you don't get on, there's no results, right? And so this is about, uh, and I'll, I won't use the word Ron used, but getting yourself in motion so that one of the best books uh, I've read besides Ron's book is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he talks about how success is nothing more than a habit. Being on a diet is nothing more than establishing new habits. Um, giving yourself personal time and blocking that is a habit. And we are, we, are, we, are a, we are a product of our habit. Just all you have to do is look at yourself because everything around you is your habit, right? And so what we want to do is look at how do, we, how do we change how we approach people in a way that serves them, that serves the community, and serves our team. And when everybody wins, everybody wins. So again, make a commitment, if you will, to maybe go back and watch uh, and watch the the, RIS, the RIS Media uh, webinar here. It will be posted shortly. Um, and and do avail yourself of some of the free gifts. I want to thank our sponsor, Mark Shepard of the Shepard Group in Utah, uh, for bringing to us the newness of the Residential Real Estate Council and what's going on there to help independent brokers. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Terry. And and just a note, we are, for anyone that was here today, doing a $50 off at their, that first hour of uh, of uh, HR consulting. So thank you for reminding me to do the next one. 50 bucks off. So. Yes, yeah, the, and the uh, code is RIS50, and there's the link. Uh, and so here's the thing. You're getting lots of presents today. Everybody likes presents. Some of them are free. Some of them are wrapped up in, in special flavors. But here's at the end of the day, it's all about making the commitment changing your why, getting up and doing it, and having the courage to be a better version of yourself. So I would just like to end this, Ron, with saying, instead of saying I'm a, I, I'm a, a poor leader and I can be better, I would just say I want to be a better leader every day. And that speaks to accountability and advancing our skill sets. And when you invest and focus in advancing your skill set to help other people with their skill set, then we have a much better place to be. And our, and our professionalism Rises. So thank you for joining us here at RIS Media today for this webinar. I want to thank you, Ron Howard, who is in Baltimore with his Baltimore look, <laughs> Betsy Cameron from Abbey, and Mark Shepard. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Join us again for another RIS Media program coming up. Uh, 
we we just love RIS Media for giving us all of these free gifts all the time. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.